Why can't I go back to Brooklyn Middle? Miles, you're giving it two weeks. We're not having this conversation. I just think that this new school is elitist. elitist. And I would prefer to be at a normal school among the people. The people? These are your people. I'm only here because I won that stupid lottery. No way. You passed the entry test just like everybody else, okay? You have an opportunity here. You want to blow that, huh? You want to end up like your uncle? What's wrong with Uncle Aaron? He's a good guy. We all make choices in life. It doesn't feel like I have a choice. You right don't! Now. I love you, Miles. Yeah, I know, Dad. See you Friday. You gotta say I love you back. Dad, are you serious? I wanna hear it. You wanna hear I me say I love you, Dad. You're dropping me off at school. I love you, Dad. Look at this place. Dad, I love you. Dad, I love you. That's a copy. Welcome back, everybody, to the Film Bros Podcast. My name is Isaiah Lucas, and I am joined by my co-hosts. Abraham. And Nick. How are you guys doing tonight? I'm all right. I'm cold. Loving it. Cold. Yeah. Loving it. It's too cold. Feels I was great. outside yesterday just ex- just experiencing the cold. <laughs> yeah, it's it's <laughs> been feeling great. Yeah. It's it's nice to be able to, to wear some sweaters, and or at least wake up in the morning and take a jacket to work, and then be like, oh, when I go outside, I still need my jacket. Yes, feels good. Yeah. I was surprised that I even fit into my stuff with all the food I ate during Thanksgiving, though. Yeah, how was your guys' Thanksgiving? It was good. It was pretty uh, chill. Good. Chill really day that day? Yeah, I had a very chill day. I only had one Thanksgiving to go to. and Oh, nice. I had a lot of food. A lot of good food. So I had three. That's crazy. I had to go to. I'm so glad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I had to go to one at 12, and then three, and then six. All the family, huh? Yep. Yeah. I get it that. was good, though. I can't complain. I always love hanging out with family and being around and just enjoying each other's company. True. Yeah. Something special about it. Yeah. Well, yeah. Thanksgiving turkey, yes or no? No. Depending on how it's made. Usually it's with, a no. With my family, it's it's getting smoked. It's getting deep fried. Like, if they make it good. Okay. And I'm like, this is the turkey that I that I can eat. If it's just like oven roasted, <laughs> no. <laughs> it's, it's tough. That's not I'm happening. Going yeah, Chew it. I mean, I, like I need know, the gravy I, yeah. along with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, it's not happening. No, I don't I, know. I'm it's, a been a while, it's been a while since I've had some good turkey. So, yeah, my my uncle. Oh, yo, shout out my uncle Jimmy because he. <laughs> I thought Thanksgiving was like, hey, I was listening to your podcast. I listened to School of Rock one, and yeah, you guys mentioned me. <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> He's like, yeah, I'm, I'm immortalized on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> but he uh, he always smokes a ham for for our smokes family. a ham. Yeah, he smokes a big fat ham. And yeah. It's that sounds good fine. every single time. I'm a ham fiend, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a side fiend. I can care less yeah. about the, the one. What's a mandatory side for you? Like you gotta have it. If cornbread casserole, really? I don't know if you ever had it. Cornbread casserole. I thought it was gonna. It sounds gross, but it's literally cornbread with corn in it, basically. Um, and a oh, cas- and like cheese and stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I've yeah, had yeah. It. I've had I thought it. it was gonna be gross because, like, the first time I saw. Um, a friend of mine make it. She put like a whole thing of sour cream in there, and I said, "That's mm. gonna be gross food." Like, okay. I don't want to try it. And then I got a bite of that. Mm. And dude, I need that every <laughs> every holiday that I've gone to. It's been there, and that's I'm always gonna be the odd one out. And I'm gonna grab the corner piece because that's the best piece. Mm. Cornbread casserole and rolls. Mm. Rolls, rolls are are. I mean, do you consider them a side? I kind of consider them like. Those aren't a side. They're just there. <laughs> They're th- that's it's a mandatory grab. It has to be there. But like yeah. that and the butter. Beans. Yeah, it's if it's beans if beans are there, if they look appetizing. What kind of beans? Like Thanksgiving style beans or something people just take beans like And bologna. <laughs> beans and bologna. <laughs> what about uh, you? Mandatory side. Mandatory side gotta be stuffing. For one, I always got to have stuffing and sweet potatoes are the second. Mm. I've slowly graduated from not really 
Sweet potatoes are fire. Not really messing with just regular mashed potatoes. They're good, but I feel like you really got to ha- nail the gravy for yeah. the mashed potatoes to be good. And a lot of times it's just regular gravy. Mm. It's just powdered gravy. Yeah. Yeah, but the, s- the stuffing I eat, we eat, I put gravy on the stuffing is what oh, I do. okay. So I get kind of best of both worlds and then sweet potatoes. I've never had homemade stuffing. I've always had it's s- the it's box good. stuffing. Dude, yeah. the box stuffing? It's still it's just fire. a good stove top. It's gas. Yeah, it's it's gas. <laughs> it is gas. Uh, what about you, though? Um, you going to say mac and cheese? Is that one of them for real? Mac and cheese or my mom's sweet potato casserole. She, like, mashes it all up, all the sweet potatoes, and then puts, like, brown sugar mm-hmm. and marshmallows and burnt, like... Do maple syrup, too, or no? Rest, like, yeah, like, roasts it all on the top and... It's so good. Every time I get it, I'm like, I'm getting the freaking two big fat spoonfuls. Yeah. Of Why mess with regular potatoes when you could have got the sweet potatoes? Yeah. Yeah. Nope. yeah. It's good. Yeah. I'm a mac and cheese fiend, but it has to look appetizing. If it doesn't look good. No, yeah. Potatoes. The mac and cheese that we had at our, uh, Dude. At our, our mom's, my mom's house. I saw the picture. Our sister. I saw the picture. My, yeah, my sister-in-law made it, and it was gas. Yeah, we had it before, too. It was we like breadcrumbs oh, on top, bro. all crispy. Ah. and Yeah, it was good. She's a cook too. Like she's a chef. I know she's you guys. A, are uh, she's a sous chef at a local restaurant here. You guys are blessed for that. Yeah, she's. she's great. Isaiah's blessed too because he has a wife as a baker, dude. Yeah. I saw that jalapeno popper dip. Did you guys have that too? Yeah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I wanted no, I to pay like her to make me that, man. <laughs> <laughs> like I think it was like Wednesday. We walked in for something. We we all were here for something, and it, it smelled like the jalapeno, jalapeno, the dip. It smelled like the yeah. dip, and oh my gosh. It, <laughs> I just wanted to yeah. it just, just fist it in my mouth. <laughs> Pause, bro. <Yo>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> hey, for that, how good it is, you catch me doing that every day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <sighs> but now we're past Thanksgiving. Yeah. Getting into the the season mm-hmm. here, the, the Christmas season. Yeah. And kind of um finding yourself. Yeah. And I and I was gonna say I felt like this movie kinda like also ties in because it snows. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Listen, listen. There's a hollow. There's a there's a holiday soundtrack on here. Spider Man talks about. Oh, it. true. Yeah, true. I didn't even think about that. Spidey, Spidey Christmas. Go to see it ties it. I knew it would somehow. <laughs> Some freaking holiday. Well, now we expose the, what we what we're watching. Spidey, Spidey bells, goblin smells, mm-hmm. or what was it? What I forget how he says. Jingle it, bells, Batman smells, Robin Lee. No. Wrong universe, homie. Wrong yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're talking about Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. This movie is great. It came out in 2018. It was directed by a couple of people. Some of them are Rob Persheisty, uh, Peter Ramsey, and, um, gosh, I got, I got his last name, Rothman. What is his first? Though? Rodney. Rodney Rothman, you're right. Um, oh, it was ri- written by Rodney Rothman and... Uh, Phil Lord as well. Yes. And I wanted to get your guys' thoughts on on Miles Morales as a character. What, what was your... Because when I first watched this movie, I had no clue who Miles Morales was. Really? I was not familiar with him at all. I don't... Mm. Like, I don't watch the... Com- read the comics at all. So, I didn't even know there was more than just Peter Parker. Yeah, I was always aware of the Spider-Verse. I because no when idea. I was in middle school, I remember the book fair. The sc- you remember the Scholastic Book Fair? Yeah. I remember it came, and they had a a Spider-Man encyclopedia. Whoa. Really? And I, and I bought it. And it then, you know, tells you, like, every single character that's ever been mentioned in all the comic books up to that point. And um, it divulged into the Spider-Verse and certain clones of Spider-Man and, like, uh, different variations of him. That's how I knew about, like, the Fantastic Bag Man oh. one where, like, Spider-Man's wearing a bag over his head because he yeah. lost his suit at one the point. The Scarlet and, one. Yeah. Or, like, um, there was another, like, uh, Spider-Man clone where, like, the clone is actually a blonde version of Peter Parker. What's that fool's name, stuff. though? I forget his actual name in the comics, but they kind of base it off of it's, him in the in the universe that we watch. It's Ben Riley. Yeah. Think is what it yeah, is. that sounds familiar, actually. Yes. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. When you... I'm not gonna spoil it, but there there are a lot of different variations and versions of Spider-Man, and then in in the Spider Verse, it gets Dude. even crazier. Yeah, like even every variation of Spider-Man you could think of, and so I always I knew about Miles Morales from that because 
back when I was in middle school, I was like, oh, whoa, they have a, a, a black Spider-Man. That's kind of crazy. I never even knew about that. And that opened up the door for me to kind of learn about it. Mm. And then um, in later Spider-Man games, they would like put Miles Morales' suit into the games. And I was, really? Yeah. And I was always, it was like unlockable like stuff that you could get. And I remember unlocking it and being like, oh, yeah, I know who Miles Morales is. Oh, yeah, I know that suit because of the little encyclopedia thing that I had. That's crazy. I, I never knew there was that big of a verse for Spider-Man. Oh, yeah. It's it's insane. Um, yeah, I didn't it. even know, you, like, we talked about the Spider-Man encyclopedia, and I looked it up right now just because I never even heard of that. Mm-hmm. And it's crazy. There's over 200 characters. I think I still have it. <laughs> Dude. <Dude's> really? Yeah. <laughs> I might be able to find it. That's so cool. Like, I that is actually, like... I think the most characters I knew from Spider-Man were, like, Spider-Man. Um, and, like, I think the deepest I got to was, like, Carnage. Mm. Well, that's... Like, I even remember, like, um, getting really interested in all the new, like, the villains that I'd never heard oh, of. Oh, yeah. Like, there was a villain in, Spi- in the Spider-Man comics called Hammerhead. And he is, like, a short, stout gangster with this, like, flat head. <laughs> And and his name is Hammer. Does he just smash people with his head or what? I I never got to look him up. I always forgot, but I was always like looking at him and being like, "Why is that a villain?" <laughs> like or or like and that's the one that kills him. Different <laughs> versions of um, Green Goblin. Like mm. like uh, there's like the Green Goblin, and then there's also like the Hobgoblin, which is like a copycat guy. Oh. Um, and this is also like where I found out about Gwen Stacy, and like how in the comics Gwen Stacy is actually. Peter Parker's first love and, and Green Goblin not. kills her in Ooh. the comics. And then later on down the line, he discovers Mary Jane. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. The, all of this was new to me when I first watched this movie. I remember thinking like, who's this Miles Morales kid? I had no idea about his backstory. I was like, like it, everything that they threw at me was n- completely brand new. So I was completely caught off guard in a lot of different areas here. And I loved it. And I remember playing the very first Spider-Man game, and you see Miles Morales, and they call him by name, and I was like, yo, I know that kid. Yeah. But they don't allude to him being Spider-Man until, like, towards the end of the game, and you're like, yo, this is sick. Like, yeah. it was cool to see him becoming more of a prominent figure in the Spider-Man universe, mm-hmm. and for good reason. He freaking kills it here. Yeah. He is just such a important character who's got his own style that he brings to Spider-Man, mm-hmm. and... It goes to show you, like, Spider-Man is not the person, really. It's it's an idea. Yeah, it's like yeah. what you stand for. Yeah. It's the the idea of always getting back up after being hit. Yeah. It's the idea of going through life's crap and still choosing to save people. Yeah. Even when yeah. it costs you greatly. Yeah. There's there's, there's a quote. quote not to, you're, are you going to? Yeah. Oh, I, Stan, I have it, too. Yeah. I thought I, you were going to quote freaking Uncle Ben. No, no, Stan Lee. Okay. Where... He says the person who helps others simply because it should or must be done and because it is the right thing to do is indeed, without a doubt, a real superhero. That's all you need. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's perfectly that's, portrayed with Miles. Yeah, that's always been what Spider Man is. Yeah. And it's interesting because there's a whole lot of discourse about the whole like who's the real Spider Man, especially when Across the Spider Verse came out. I never paid much attention to it because I thought those people were idiots. Mm. But they were like, Peter Parker's the real Spider Man and all that stuff. But it I mean, they completely missed the entire point of it. Yeah. But Is that why there was memes when saying, I understand it now? I when think there so. there was memes that are like, this is my Spider-Man when this movie was coming out? I, I, I don't know. I think so. I mean, I knew people would like debate like between the three live action ones, like Tom Holland and uh, Andrew Garfield and uh, Tobey Maguire. Yeah, right. this, this man's favorite is Andrew Garfield, right? <laughs> <laughs> I really like Andrew Garfield as Spider-Man. I think I don't know what it is. <laughs> I I don't know what it is about him. I have to say, I think Tom Holland is the best portrayal okay. of Spider-Man. But my favorite. But is there is there is a special place in my heart for, for Tobey Maguire. Fair. I'm not gonna lie to you, just because of that nostalgia for me. Yeah, fair. Especially Spider-Man Two. Yeah. Like the whole that whole train scene, and and also. The fact that Toby Toby Maguire's Spider Man just hands are rated E for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> like he's going in and just no questions asked, fighting. Yeah. Like the he's and like I think of like the Tom Holland uh one in uh No Way Home. Whenever he f- encounters Doc Ock 
And he's always like kind of dodging and jumping around and like not doing a lot to fight. Right. Tobey Maguire in Spider Man Two immediately standing on business and like just immediately starts <laughs> just going insane. And like that whole fight sequence on the side of the building with Doc Ock holding Aunt May in the sky, yeah. like incredible. Mm-hmm. Like that Spider Man Two is like legitimately one of my favorite Spider-Man movies of all freaking time. Okay. Yeah. I love it too. I I do love it. But this it's up for debate if it's the best Spider-Man movie ever. Yeah. Because I think there is argument for for this to to say that this is this could be the best Spider-Man movie ever. It just just I think solely because it understands the character easily. Insanely well. Yes. And and it portrays the idea of who Spider-Man is and what a sp- what Spider-Man stands for mm-hmm. in the most precise way possible. Dude, and it's not like you just get a Miles story. It is a Peter Parker story as well, but in a non-traditional way. Mm-hmm. You get all of these unique, interesting characters that don the Spider-Man persona. I think the way they, they show the Peter Parkers in this movie and they show the other Spider-Mans is what we need to see and that's it. I and it then great. when they show us Miles Morales... That's they're like, oh hey, this is just about his because essentially this is just Miles Morales' story with their put inputs, and the way they the way they explained their Spider Man and then our our Spider Man, it just made perfect sense. It does. Mm-hmm. It, it's so cool to see the second movie as well. I'm not gonna talk at all about it because I want you to experience it. You haven't watched it? No. It's on Netflix. You really should. Um, but it it. <sighs> I'll, t- I'll tell you something real quick. The only thing I know about the second one is I saw people on TikTok thirsting for Miles Morales with braids. That's it. Oh, yeah. Well, like, it's <laughs> like, like, that's like a small part. seeing him with braids and being like, yo, he kind of fine. <laughs> like, and I was like, no. he's a cartoon, bro. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, oh, that's so good. Yeah. No. I yeah. never that. What side of TikTok are you on? Because I never got that. <laughs> thirsting for some, uh, some braids. Some cartoons, bro. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say the um like they're all unique and yet they still share like a a connection. And seeing all of this, the live action Spider-Mans obviously you know that they go through very similar things that kind of bring them into who they're supposed to be. You know, they all start like really un- inexperienced and they fall off buildings and they get hurt all the time. They don't know how to thwip and they they go through a tremendous loss. Like there's there's this general flow that you go through mm-hmm. and I re- I got to experience that in a different way. Yeah. With Miles. Yeah, definitely. In a way that I was not expecting. Mm-hmm. But it still had that s- that very familiar flow to it where I I really enjoyed it and I yeah. you know, it was still still a part of it. Yeah. And uh, we'll get into this a little bit more whenever we get into our uh, our categories right. here. But I do have to say, too, that I, I appreciate that the movie doesn't go through with an origin story that we've seen done three different times, mm-hmm. you know. And, like, I, I understand the point of an origin story. You have to tell you tell where, this, where the, the character came from. But in this movie, we get a completely new character. And whenever we get introduced to Peter Parker... Like he immediately is like, yeah, I got bit by a radioactive spider. It's all the world. <laughs> yeah. I did this. Get <laughs> on up. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. and you know, he, he references the old Spider-Man movies, and um, it's done in such a way where it's like, okay, yeah, I've seen all this before. I don't need to be told it yeah. again. This feels like incredibly concise. This yeah. is great. And then we get told about Miles Morales' story, mm-hmm. and it's yeah, just an incredible way to. Not only draw the audience in because it brings something familiar and like there's little tidbits, right? And be like, "It's so funny." Oh, I remember that. Yeah, from Spider-Man Three. You know, and like he even says stuff. like a so-so popsicle, and you see, yeah. it's dude, like that's <laughs> like an actual picture. Yeah, it's like a l- real life popsicle, popsicle you get at, f- at a fr- yeah at an ice cream truck. Yeah. yeah, everyone has experienced at least one of those things. There. Yeah, and it yeah it was like a meta moment, but yeah. it's 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 really what it is. It's the balance between fan service of the characters you know and love and the comics that you people have read throughout however long this guy has been around yeah. and it's also telling a genuinely deep thought provoking story mm-hmm. and uh it's the balance between that i think is is really beautiful yeah definitely so with that being said you give a brief synopsis and then spoiler warning and yeah. we'll get into it we'll get into it like we were talking about it, this is miles morales's origin story 
Uh, we follow this kid coming up from Brooklyn. He is uh, in high school or in it's college. Or no, high he's school? A, he's in high school. It's high school. It's, it's just like school. a. It says middle school. No, Vision Middle School. No, no, it's vi- it's an academy. It's Vision High, isn't it? I thought it was academy. I'm pretty sure it's Vision because it's like school. a prep school that he gets into on a scholarship. Yes, I'm gonna just gonna say high school. He, I'm pretty sure it is. Okay. Vision High, Vision Academy. He's going there. He's kind of doing his thing. And he kind of gets tossed into this uh, universe-altering threat, really. Um, The universe kind of shatters for a moment, and we get thrown into a web of of, uh, (laughs) events that tie a lot of Spider-Men together and how they decide to uh, fight. I don't want to spoil too much of it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's really him because... Him stepping into the role of Spider-Man when yeah. the Spider-Man in his universe is gone. Mm-hmm. And him kind of uh, finding ca- uh, confidence in who he is and his his abilities and using them to send his people home. Yep. So that's Miles Morales. Yeah. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. It's a great film. Um, it's not currently streaming anywhere, so you'll have to rent it if you don't already own it. Um, but definitely do check it out if you haven't. It's a great film. Um, I... <coughs> Excuse me. I had the luxury of owning it f- uh, digitally and physically, actually, because of you. Really? Yeah, you and Lisa got it for me for my birthday one. Oh, year. we got all the Spider Man, right? Yep. Yes, I remember. And that. that was one of them. And I redeemed the digital code, and I've had it there ever since. Nice. And um, I I know that I think I've told this story before recently, but um, I just recently came back to the movie for the second time on a on a family trip that I was on a couple months ago. And <clears throat> up until that point I had watched the film and I just remember it like not really striking me for some reason. And then my I was with my niece and nephew and they were wanting to watch something and there wasn't like really any internet where we were at. Um so or w- maybe I should say they didn't the TV didn't have a lot of options like to stream, but it had voodoo. And so I was like, okay, I'll log into my voodoo. I've got movies there. And, you know, we can just pick and choose whatever movies we want to watch. And my niece and nephew stumbled upon this film. And we're like, let's watch that. So I was like, okay. And so I watched it with them. And I don't know what it was. But hit you. something about maybe watching it with them and, like, them kind of seeing it for the first time. And then, I don't know, like, maybe it just, maybe I wasn't really paying attention the first time. I'm not sure. But that second time just hit mm-hmm. and i like i complete afterwards i was like how did i never give this this movie it's 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 flowers like i i don't understand why it took me so long to like really appreciate it for what it is mm-hmm. and I, I i sing its praises now oh, it's, yeah. it's 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 incredible and and i i i always have fun going through uh specifically letterboxed reviews of this movie oh gosh because everyone is just, is just in it? unison praising it and they're like i don't understand how how like masterfully made a, <laughs> an, an animated movie can be yeah. like and just all this stuff it's i i go through it and i'm just like yeah you guys were saying everything i'm thinking so. yeah <laughs> i had a hard time believing that across the spider-verse could hold up to such a great movie mm. uh and i say it will i say it does I say okay. it's j- either it's either just as good or even slightly better. Okay. B- Got to return to it a couple more times to really get my footing for it, but it is it's so true to the character of Miles Morales. Mm. So you you've really got to watch it, man. Okay. All right. Well, without further ado, we're going to get into some spoiler territory here, so if you haven't seen the movie, pause it, go check it out and then come back to hear what we have to say about Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. Um, but as always, we're going to start off with our first category being favorite scenes. Mm-hmm. I wanted to bring up the introduction. I think the introduction is one of the best introductions to a Spider-Man. It's so... Because it starts not even from... It literally starts from when you start the movie to the main credits. Mm-hmm. And it's like... It's already glitching, mm-hmm. and you're wondering what the heck... If you've never seen this movie, you're like, whoa, what the heck is already happening? Mm-hmm. So you're already intrigued... With what the heck is happening in this movie? Because there's there's a glitching, and and it just brings us into um, Peter Parker's life. Yeah, and someone we know someone very we well. Know. And then I just love it. 
yeah. we talked about the the very funny nature of it. Him saying like, "I've been, I've done this, I've done that, I've done this, I've done that," and it's like him s- doing the train sequence, him doing the dancing, him saving uh, Mary Jane in the you know the thing, him mm-hmm. like getting his back broken, <laughs> doing like, the uh, the upside down kiss. Yeah, all yeah. of the very iconic classic scenes of Spider Man, and it's just saying. This is me. I'm Spider-Man. I do this and I get up. I find a way to get up every single time. Mm-hmm. I'm the one and only Spider-Man. And I love that it immediately right after cuts to Miles. Because you know that like, obviously it's into the Spider-Verse. You know that it's Miles. Mm-hmm. And him saying like, I'm the one and only Spider-Man and then immediately cutting to Miles. You're like, are you? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like this kid has got something that's going to happen to him. I just know it. Yeah. And then we get him to see something's oh, good. Yeah, Post Malone yeah. coming in. Yeah, that song you is. You see him sing "Sunflower," and you're yeah. just you're into his, this world, new world, dude. Yeah. I hear that song, and I immediately think of Spider Man. That yeah. song makes me smile because of Spider. It's I think about it, and it's like, oh, it's in Spider Man. It's so yeah. good too. It's just catchy as heck. And he's and while that song's playing, he's doing something he loves, True, which, which is, is throwing up tags. And you know, he's mm-hmm. he's doing you know writing on the postage stickers and stuff and slapping them everywhere whenever he's on his way to school and stuff and I always thought that was so cool. That's like one of the things that he loves doing is making art throwing and then putting it in places and throwing up his 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 tags and stuff. Yeah, and I love just the subtle characterizations of um his both his family and himself where he's like, you know, his dad's kind of a real strict hard guy and then you got your his mom that's all lovey and she speaks Spanish to him. Yeah, shout out to the to the Puerto Rican community there right there. <laughs> Seriously. Shout out to my people. It's you know very subtle, and then he's going down to town in the school. He's passing all of his friends that he used to hang out with, mm-hmm. and everyone is so like, "Yo, Miles, we miss you, man!" And like, yeah, yo, I think this part was super cute because this girl, I noticed that he was, she was like, "We miss you," and he goes, "Yeah, me too." And he goes, "Wait, you miss me?" Yeah, and he <laughs> starts like smiling, and you just see like, yeah. you see his personality shine through these other kids mm-hmm. automatically, and you just see the person that he's gonna be and it's amazing yeah it's it's funny to see him you know be real open to these people and throwing up tags on his way there and then you get the the iconic scene where he gets a tag trips and his dad well you see a cop come up and you're like he's like oh come on dad you don't have to drive me to school and it's that whole same you know i or uh very obvious embarrassment scene when he yeah. gets out and he's like i love you dad i love you say it back <laughs> has, it, has, has your parents did your parents ever make you do that? No. Yeah. My first Never. day my first day in high school. I <sighs> hated my life. My mom would not leave the freaking line until I said I love you and I said I love you and then I walked away, bro. I was so bad. Yeah. I uh my story was in middle school. My dad found this this song that I thought was like extremely dumb. And it was like a kid's like it's artist like talking about beans. Yeah. yeah. I, Have I told this on the pod before? No. I th- I think I've seen this outside the pod. Okay. I think he played the song for us once. Really? I think so. So he played this song about this this it's like a like a kid's guitarist singer songwriter and it's like this song going, You gotta eat them beans, boy, you gotta eat them beans and I would think it was the stupidest thing ever. I was in middle school. And he's driving me to school one day and he gets this bright idea, I'm gonna roll all the windows down in the song. car and blast that song. Like as loud as I possibly can while I dropped it, my kid off. So he pulls up, he's blasting it. He puts the child lock on so I can't roll the windows up or do anything like You're it. Sitting there like, and I'm sitting there like, oh my gosh, like why, why is this happening? Mm-hmm. Why is he doing this? He's sitting there laughing, having the time of his life. And I start to get out and I immediately like, I'm not, I usually always would like lean over, give him a hug, say bye, I love you. And then leave. I was like, I'm getting out. And like, <laughs> he started grabbing my stuff. And then he immediately goes, Hey, where's my hug? <laughs> and I was like, oh. <laughs> and I had to get back in the car and give him a hug. And he's like, now tell me I love you. And I was like, I love you. And then like, I like went in and I started crying. Like, really? oh, cause I was, I was convinced Every kid could hear, you got to eat them beans, boy. You got to eat them. And I was like, they're going to call me the bean kid now, <laughs> like, or something like that. Like, I'm I'm so embarrassed. And I walked in freaking crying. Dude. And, my, and then I told my dad that. And he was like, why? Why? You embarrassed of me? You're that embarrassed of me? And I was like, no, you put me in an embarrassing <laughs> situation. 
And and then like all my friends saw me crying and they're like, What's wrong? What's wrong? Uh, so then I had to tell them. Uh, yeah. All around bad. Yeah. And that's what Miles is going through. Yeah. His dad's in, kind of embarrassing him as he's going, but somewhat showing him love. Yeah. And not only is he embarrassing him, but um, Miles, we also get the the inkling that he doesn't necessarily want to be at this school. It's true. He doesn't. He not only is struggling with the workload, but he's like purposefully failing. Like there's a test that a teacher comes up to him and says, you know, what's what's the, the probability that you get 100% wrong on a true and false test? And he says, 50. And she says, it's miraculous that you somehow got zero out of a hundred correct. The it's only like you, way. It's like the only way this could have happened is if you deliberately answered everything wrong. And she was like, I know that you've got, you've got this in you. Mm-hmm. Like, and, and I know that you can, you can do this work. You are a smart kid. I want you to write a paper on, you know, what you, what your expectations are in life and, and, and what you, you want, want. Yeah. like what you want out of this. Who you're going to be. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely a, a culture shock for him because mm-hmm. he goes in to see all of his classmates, his fellow peers, and like they're all just like completely different than his other guys. Even one goes like, "Dude, you got your shoe untied." And he goes, "I well, know, oh, it's just, a choice." Yeah. They all just look like like they're just a bunch of private kids who think they're better than everyone. Mm. And he like, I feel like I would feel the same way if I went from a public school to a private school. Mm. I'm the I'm the outcast. And yeah. that's how we. I feel like that's how he feels, because, mm. like I, th- I think they say that he got this on a scholarship from an entry exam. So like, obviously, like he was just trying testing the waters to see if he could make it. Mm-hmm. And now his parents are making him do it because he did it. Mm-hmm. And I feel like, obviously, yeah, he feels like the odd odd one out. And yeah, and not only that too. We come to find out that it's like a boarding school type situation mm-hmm. where he has to like live, live there, there yeah. throughout the week and then gets to go home on, that's, on the weekends. That's why I thought it was college because he had school. a dorm. It's but high school. It's my bad. Yeah. Yeah. What an interesting place. Mm-hmm. It's pretty sweet actually. Um, but yeah, th- it's kind of introducing us to to who Miles is as a person. His his workload. I mean, it's basic Spider Man stuff. You struggle with your workload and then you struggle with your new powers, mm-hmm. but. What I think is so cool is that, you know, he gets this kind of friction against his father. You know, he still knows that his father loves him, but he doesn't really have a choice. He's got to suffer the co- suffer through this so he can have a good life that his dad wants him to have. But his safe place is his uncle. Uncle Aaron. And I love... Mahershala Ali. <laughs> I, I f- love... Is it really him? The goat. I love this character. I do too. I love that he goes over to his apartment and he's hey. like... <laughs> yeah, that, that whole scene is fantastic. I, I, I feel like we're just walking through the whole movie. That's my second favorite scene. Yeah, me too. Okay. Seeing his uncle? Yeah, seeing his uncle for the first time because I you don't get the, the family tension at all. Mm-hmm. You don't know what happened between them two brothers. You just know that you know after he's been through all the stress of school, getting his workload crazy, he goes to his uncle's and he's like, just he can just be free, be himself. Mm-hmm. And the, the whole uncle scene is like... uh you know the shoulder, yeah. you know the shoulder touch. And he Dude, goes, he goes, yeah, I do. Tell me, anyways, though. Like he doesn't really know. <laughs> this was yeah. one of my bro moments because I, I put it as I said, "Dude, Uncle Aaron," and he said, "Use your light skin face." Yeah, <laughs> like, for real. He said, "Hey," and yeah. he said, "No, not like that." Like he straight up said, "You got to do hey. it." Like <laughs> it was so funny. It was so funny. Yeah. He tries to do it. He goes, "Are you sure you're my nephew, man?" <laughs> like, yeah. it's and the so way he good. like stutters too when Miles does it. He's like. Hey. Yeah. Just <laughs> yeah. It's just one of those wholesome moments with uh, an uncle and his nephew. Yeah. Uh, just uh, you know, being that fun uncle. Mm-hmm. It's it's something good. Yeah, but then we also get to find out that they have a, a a, an interest in common yeah. that is throwing up these tags and and, and you know expressing yourself through through art. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, while they're hanging out on the couch, his uh, Miles notebook ha- happens to be out on the couch and. Uh, Uncle Aaron kind of grabs it and is like, Yo, these are good, man. Have you thrown these up yet? And he's like, no, no, I haven't got a chance to. And he says, well, guess what? I got a spot. I got a perfect spot. Let's go Let's go and let's go and do it. Mm-hmm. And so they take a train out and they find this spot. And eventually Uncle Aaron kind of shows him this blank canvas of a, of a wall and says like, this this right here is just begging for, for you to throw this up. I, mm-hmm. I say, let's do it. And, you know, you get this sick montage. It's of, so sick. Of Miles you know tagging the place up uh-huh. and, and like and you know he just creates this beautiful art piece 
that in turn we we come to find out is kind of like in rebellion to his essay that he's supposed to write because it, it's titled the essay is titled great expectations and then the art piece that he ends up creating on that wall spells no expectations mm. and then he does like an outline of, of himself. himself it looks it looks sick yeah but while that's happening we get little cuts that there's there's a, radio, there's a radioactive spider here with the, uh, the numbers 42 on it. Uh-huh. Yeah, and it's crawling around, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. Yeah, and I, I also love the moment, too, whenever... Um, I And I think the reason I love it so much is because in other previous Spider-Man movies, the bite it's like is this, is this like otherworldly, like, yeah. dramatic <laughs> thing... You know, it is positioned to be that way too. Yeah, and it is like you know, it, you know, he comes up, he's like, wait, 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 I want to take a picture of this real quick. And he goes up, and you see the spider come up and go, you know, bite him. And as soon as he does, like, it, it shows like, like <laughs> the venom going in, and then all of a sudden he just kind of goes, you, just like, you know, <laughs> like yeah. just kind of smacks. It's like it. a little spider. Like it's nothing. Yeah, and it that's it. That's the, that's the end of it. He's yeah. just kind of like, okay, that's whatever, and you know, goes back to doing whatever he was doing, and he wakes up in the morning, puts his outfit on, and is like. My pants are so small. I need new pants. Dude, yeah. These are these things are short on me. He's what like, happened? Am I going through puberty? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's great. And that I think it, even this is when that comic book esque style starts to come in even more yeah. because his inner thoughts is now now being not, displayed. Yeah, they're not like the comic book blocks, mm-hmm. just kind of in the actual like in his life. Yeah. It is so cool, and it, he gets like all you. I love his inner dialogue. Yeah. It's so freaking funny. He's like, "Why am I sweating so much? Can everyone see me sweating?" And then you just see everyone you like, see Gwen say, yeah. "Why are you sweating so much?" Yeah, I even there's even one where I was laughing too, where he's walking around. And he's like, no, "All right, nobody saw that. Nobody, nobody saw that. Everyone saw that. Yeah. Why is that girl so tall? Yeah. Like, like, <laughs> like, there's just a million and one things running through his mind. Yes, yes. And um, it's 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 perfect setup for our character for. The, the 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 feeling that Miles feels and you know he he he's in a he already feels like a fish out of water here yeah. and now he is quite literally feeling like all the eyes are on him mm-hmm. and that anxiety is just getting to him and he doesn't know how to react to it and then you know the security guard comes up presses him and is like Morales I know you snuck out last night who are you? where were you just freaking and he's it. like and he's like act dumb act dumb then he goes Who's Morales? <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> he goes, that Not was too that dumb. dumb. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, it's great. It's so great. Uh, it it is just because th- he's uh, obviously going through his trans uh, transition into becoming his or getting his powers. You know, he gets his hand stuck in uh, Gwen's hair and all mm-hmm. that. Guess Gwanda, I should say. And you know, he's like sticking to the walls, getting the birds stuck on him. He finally makes it back, and I think it's so interesting that. You know when you when you typically think of a Spider-Man trans like when he first gets bit, there is nothing to compare it to. You are literally like experiencing these things for the first time. Mm-hmm. But when Miles does it, he has a baseline understanding of what Spider-Man is. Yeah. He even gets the comic and he's sticking to the comics and he's like, you well, can yeah. see what he's going through yeah. is literally what the comic is going through. Well, yeah. in this in his universe, there is a Spider-Man. Or there, yeah, there was one. There was yeah. a Spider-Man. Yeah. Well, I mean, I feel like we can talk about it now. No, we can't. It ha- well, that it happened a little earlier, which is a bro moment for me. But he is, he's like, wait, sticking? And you see it on the comic. And, you and know, it's kind of cool. He sees the comics that say yeah. exactly what he said prior to reaching the restroom. And yeah. he's like, the, the, his room, excuse me. He's like, wait, there's two spider man Yeah. How so, can it be? Yeah. It and was, then, yeah, interesting. And then we get the intro of another Spider-Man, right? No, because after... Uh, the the this universe's Spider Man gets killed because they s- they meet each other and then they recognize whoa you're like me whoa. yeah yes, yeah yes yes so that happens the okay, portal yes, he opens runs ru- he runs to his room and then he goes back to find that spider yes, yes. and then that's how he meets Alchemax that's yes. wh- that's who I- oh you're right yeah that's after yeah he dies after you're yes right. he dies after so he so after he like looks at the comic we can actually go to the spot because I, seeing the underground like portal and stuff is one of my favorites the oh the the reactor the collider yeah the collider, collider. See, dude the collider is one of my f- it, it almost reminds me of big hero six when they did the uh portal and stuff okay. that's what i kind of reminded me of but it it, it this scene is just so action-packed 
and you see like Miles want to do some some stuff, but he can't because he doesn't know what he can and can't do with his powers yet. Yeah, and but he just, but he also has that feeling like he's yeah. like I I gotta help. Mm-hmm. Like there there's got to be something that I can do to help. And then he sees Spider Man, you know, getting clocked by Green Goblin, yeah. and he goes. What am I thinking? I can't do anything. <laughs> yeah, like, I, I, Dude, I, I, I'd be useless out here. That green goblin is huge. Ma- yeah. yeah, completely different than what we're familiar with. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so he's – is this Peter P. Parker? It's just it's No, just this is Peter just Peter Parker. Parker. Peter Parker. This is regular Peter Parker. and Voiced by Chris Pine, this yeah, one. Yeah, which is – for the small amount that he's in it, I think he There's does fantastic. There's some people yeah. who have lines in here where I'm like, what? I didn't know that they were in it. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's besides the point. And we, you just see them fight, and Miles Morales again. It's just is stuck. He doesn't know what to do. And like you, like Isaiah said, he's like, I gotta do something, but he can't. And we finally get to this part where the Prowler shows up. Um, when Peter Parker's trying to use this goober, <laughs> right, what they call it. Um, and essentially it's like this <laughs> reset so key to stop this device. Mm-hmm. But the Prowler comes out of nowhere and just destroys him basically yeah prowler's theme is so sick i don't i can't do it by <gasps> it's so sick dude yeah it is so menacing yes it is yeah. i love it just this character is just like oh he's here he's yeah. prowling he's yeah. just stalking me it just feels like a like a presence like an entity <laughs> is there in the room with you yes. you know it's yeah it's great yeah. and and then essentially they were able to start the portal mm-hmm. and open multiple universes mm-hmm. essentially yeah. and but it got so bad that it, that it i think it opened five yeah. well like you well, see what happens is goblin like starts yeah, freaking yeah, gra- yeah, gra- yeah, yeah, yeah grinding yeah. spider-man's face that. into the portal yeah and that in turn and it's going uh, and yeah. you see the the, oh, oh, the web you? Yeah. Open up. Yeah, and that in turn opens up dimensions for other Spider-Man to yes, enter yes, the yes, universe. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And then essentially it just blows up because mm-hmm. there's too much power. And the only way again is to get that key goober up there and just shut it down. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but but he but can't, he can't do Green it. Green Goblin basically messed this all up and made so much damage. Peter Parker is under a bunch of rubble. Miles Morales finally sees him and goes down there and it's like what can I do to help you like what do I do um and he tells him here like do what take you this can. thing take this promise me you'll not let him turn it on yeah it's like if you turn it on everything you know and love will die it will yeah. be gone mm-hmm. you can't let that happen promise yeah. me and then he t- Miles Morales tries to run away and then slips and falls and makes a noise and sends Prowler Kingpin sen- sends Prowler for him and King come to find kills out, kills Peter Parker. Yeah, kills Spider Man. Kills Spider Man. That's one of the biggest role moments. Yeah, seriously. That was when that happened. The first, you, I tell you, my jaw was like, "What do you mean they killed him? Yeah, like oh, it's literally Peter Parker. What do you freaking yeah. mean yeah, they he's killed not him? Supposed yeah. to die. And not just that, the the conversation that Peter and Miles have beforehand. He's like, "Oh, you're like me. I know you probably got a million things going through your head right now." But don't worry. Like once I once I save the day again and beat this bad guy, I'll show you the ropes. Yeah. And like you know, like we'll we'll get through this together. I thought there was only gonna be one, but you're here. (laughs) And he's dead. He's dead. Yeah. And now the one guy that Miles was banking on, showing him how to be Spider Man, just died. (laughs) Yeah. So now he's got to find out how he can be Spider Man on his own, knowing that he has the power. Yeah. Freaking blew my mind. Honestly. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, another favorite scene for me um after that is um it's it's pretty far into the movie but it's all of the spider people meeting up at Aunt May's. Dude. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh do you guys got anything before that? I liked I I liked when we found out who Doc Ock was and how we saw yeah. I just liked that scene because okay. we finally get to see Miles use some of his powers and finally swing mm-hmm. and just be a little snippet of Spider-Man. Yeah. Okay, and um, you so get a, you get also f- a familiar enemy too, but in a yeah, but in, in a, a twist way. way. Yeah. It's way. not Otto Octavius; it's Olivia Octavius. Uh, Olivia uh, Octavius, which yeah. I thought was pretty cool. Because I even think it's funny too. Peter B. Parker 
is like, I'll go in there, I'll get the doctor's secret yeah, yeah. secret files or something like and that. Then he sees and her then, walk by, and he sees her, yeah, her walk by, and he goes, "I'll work on my personal biases." Yeah. Like, <laughs> like all it's this so stuff. Yeah. It's it so is, good. Yeah, it is. It is good. Do you want to talk about that scene? Yeah. Well, you were saying yeah, something. Yeah, I just, I just, you finally get to see Miles Morales be Spider Man, mm. and you see him. My favorite part was when he turns invisible. Mm. You, I, I've never seen a Spider-Man that was able to turn invisible. Mm-hmm. So when I first saw this, I was like, "Bro, imagine if like when he's fighting Sandman and like I just my mind went to other Spider-Mans and I was just like, imagine if he had that power while fighting oh, yeah. these enemies. It's freaking inc- it's an incredible it's an power. incredible power. Yeah. Um, but he doesn't know how to use it because he's just learning. And again, we find out that Doctor Octavia is Doc Ock, and they call her or. Live. Her friends call her Liv. Liv. Yeah. And it's so cool because we, f- she's like showing, in the beginning of the movie, we see her like showing a class, like a presentation, like a video of her. She's saying mm-hmm. about about the multiverse as well. Yeah. So when you, when you hear her talking about that, it's just connecting all the dots. It's mm-hmm. connecting all the dots. And, and even when you get to her office and you see the light fixtures, they're all octagons. Yeah. <laughs> You're just like, oc- come on. Yeah. Like, can you be more obvious? Yeah. And That's then funny. finally, so essentially they're trying to, what happens was Miles Morales accidentally broke the goober when he fell, and now they have to fix and find a way to fix a new one. Mm-hmm. And Doc Ock is the only one who computer's the only one who has that access. Mm-hmm. So they have to go there. Push comes to shove. They essentially have to steal the mo- the m- computer. It's, it's so not the monitor. It's not so the monitor. <laughs> funny to me that like. He's, He's just like, the whole I'm thing. just going to take the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, get the, like, it's funny to me that after they do that incredibly long password, <laughs> he logs in and it's the computer screen is just trashed. Yeah. And he's just it's like, everything. He's like, I don't know what to do, bro. Yeah. <laughs> just takes the thing. It's so funny. And it's yeah. funny because he's invisible, but the computer's not invisible. Yeah, it's, just yeah. floating. it's just floating. And and then you see him walking away and um, he's talking to Peter Park, a different Peter Parker. This is. Peter B. Parker, I believe. Yep. And Peter B. Parker's like sending hints to him. Doc Ock goes, Who are you talking to? And then she like like, Oh, there's two of you like because she realizes one, this is a different Peter Parker that's in her office. Yep. Peter Parker died in this universe. Yeah. And so she's like, This is awesome. She knows. My uni- my my con- contraption's working. There's yeah. another universe. And so blah blah blah. This it's all this is happening. They're just stealing the computer because he can't reach it, and it's just stressful. Mm-hmm. And then they, <laughs> I love this part because it's funny. He he says, "I'm gonna steal a bagel when they walk out," and of course he does steal a bagel. And you finally see him s- saying, "Okay." He starts. Peter Parker starts swinging, and Miles is just running. He's just running. He's like, "What are you doing down there, dude? You're <laughs> you're supposed to be swinging. They're gonna get you like that." And he goes, "I don't know how. You just you you said you were gonna teach me. The only person who <laughs> was gonna teach me died." Yeah. And he goes. You just got to trust and have a little faith. It's a, yeah. a little step of faith, I think he says. And he goes, okay. And then he goes, double tap. Like I think he says, double tap it to go. Or something like that. Yeah. yeah. And you finally just see him swinging and getting like kind of the hangs of it. And you're just like, yes. It's cool. Finally. It's really cool. It's yeah. just really cool because you see him growing. Yeah. I also Spider-Man. like that we are seeing this version of Peter Parker taking the time to kind of show miles the reins because whenever we get introduced to him he's kind he's of a failure and he's ready to throw it all away yeah like he is like i in my universe <laughs> like i got married she wanted kids i was scared <laughs> my she left me mary jane left me i got fat yeah. like and like like spider-man eventually becomes like a failure who just kind of sits in his apartment all day and eats pizza yeah like and and it is a it's a version of spider-man that we have never seen Mm-mm. maybe outside of like maybe spider-man 2 where like in the same vein he's ready to throw it away he doesn't want to be spider-man anymore but in this one it's it different. really just it really does feel like he is like i am at rock bottom i've made poor financial decisions <laughs> yeah what like, is it uh tgi I, I, spidey yeah or something? yeah and he's like i've i've you know i'm at rock bottom here like i have no money i have my wife is my wife left me divorced like yeah. i've I have nothing. Like I have nothing to live for here. I don't want to be Spider Man anymore. And when they get introduced to one another, he's like, You gotta teach me. And he's and like, And he no. keeps being like, You wanna you wanna know something? Run. Yeah. Don't go the other way. Because being Spider Man is hard and it it 
it's it's not fun. You're gonna lose people that you love, and it's it's not overall like not a good time. No. And eventually, Miles kind of guilts him into it and is like, "The only person that's gonna be able to help me save the universe or help me save the day is you." And like now, you're not even gonna teach me. And he's like, "Fine, I'll 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 show you something. We'll get the goober. Yeah, we'll 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 do it. We'll do this." And so that's why they end up stealing this whole computer in the first place and all yeah. that stuff. But then that gets to to my favorite scene, where um, we eventually get introduced to Gwen, who is Spider Gwen, mm-hmm. as well in that in that whole forest scene, and then they all go, they go to, to Aunt, May's. Aunt May's. Yeah, and as they go there, they're kind of like it feels familiar. Like it feels familiar to me, but it's different yeah. in some way. And so eventually they go and <coughs> excuse me. Um, Aunt May kind of looks at she knows Peter and is like she's like you you're, got you're Peter but you're not like you're not my Peter and she goes Man, yeah you got <laughs> you got big you got big and he's <laughs> like are those yeah, no. sweats <laughs> she's like yes yeah they are sweats. yeah but eventually it's 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 one of those things where like all of the Spider Men like feel this this like calling to Aunt May mm-hmm. like she is like a a standard character throughout every Spider Verse as well, pretty much. Yeah, like, and so they all feel this calling to go to her house, and eventually they go and they're like, "Did um, Peter have a place to fix one of these?" Go- and she's like, "Oh, a goober." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and she knew exactly what it was. I love that she's like, "Oh, follow me this way." And Peter B. Parker, he's kind of like, he's he's low key jealous a little bit because he's like, "Oh yeah, I have one of these little shacks back at my place," yeah. and he's like. Oh, not like this. He's you, like, yeah, this is much more pretentious than mine. Was. <laughs> yeah. you, s- you see, like this incredibly elaborate layer that yeah. Spider-Man has in this universe. Yeah. He's got the tanks. He's got the the Spidey mobile, all you know, uh, hanging up by his webs, and it just looks super freaking high tech. Yeah, it almost looks like all the a bat, bat layer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. the suits. It, the suits are sick. It made me laugh too because Peter B. Parker, when he's in there, he goes. Well, if this was mine, it'd be a lot different. I'd have a futon there. I'd have some <laughs> pizza here. Yeah. Stupid. <laughs> Stupid but funny. Yeah. yeah. And they get down there, and this is when we get introduced to all the other spider people. To the other three. That have also felt the calling to come to Ant Man. And, and what a lineup it is. I yeah. was really caught off guard seeing just the. the the range of spider people out there. Yeah. And I loved. Spider Noir, I Dude, do too. Uh, Spider no Man Noir is he's the sick. greatest. You know, yeah. do you know that's Nicolas Cage? Yes, yeah. it's Nicolas that's freaking crazy. Cage. Yeah, I love it too. When they all recognize that there are different Spider people there, and they kind of are looking up, and then they get introduced to Spider Man Noir, and he says, "Hey, fellas," and Miles goes, "Is he in black and white? And why is there wind blowing in the basement? <laughs> yeah, the wind follows." And then he goes, "Wherever I go, the wind follows, and the wind." Smells like rain. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you know, like, like it sounds like something Nicholas Cage would say yeah. unhinged. Like he would just say that normally. Yeah, yeah. that's good. And, but it, but like he's so in tuned to the character because in that universe, Spider Man is a 1930s detective who fights Nazis. Yeah, you know, and so cool. Yeah, like it, but you know that's his universe. That's why he's in black and white. That's why he has these like strange little sayings and all this stuff uh-huh. and like. I Can't think he figure he calls, out what a Rubik's cube is. Yeah, he like calls somebody in a fight like a boiled turtle snapper or something like that. <laughs> something like, r- like ridiculous little sayings. But then like we also get Penny Parker. Yeah. Who is from the future and she's Japanese and then she found the spider that was then put into this like mech mech robot thing yeah, that is now like, her best friend. And did you they fight together? This is a little off top. Did you guys ever play Overwatch? Mm-mm. That was a game. There's there's a person named Diva okay. who looks ex- who reminds me exactly like this. Who's a little tiny person and has a mech who can, when she needs her, will go in there and just destroy. Yeah. That's same 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 thing, yeah. bro. Yeah. Same yeah. Character. And then we also get Spider Spider Ham, which yeah. I thought was kind of Peter funny. Porker. Yeah. What's his name? Peter or? Porker, and it's John. I don't know if you guys Daily know John Mulaney. John Mulaney. John Mulaney. John Mulaney. Yeah. So That's so good. funny. So freaking good. Yeah. Works at the Daily Beagle. Yeah. And it's good. It's 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 funny because all three comics books, like we've gotten an idea where a comic book goes and he's like, all right, for the last time, you know, it happens at the beginning. It happens with Gwen. And now all three of them go. Mm-hmm. And it's, again, it's that relatively similar story. Got bitten by a radioactive this. That, and uh, now I'm, you know, saving the world. Blah, 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 blah. And then yeah. I lost my people and now I'm here. 
Yeah. And it's all like, it's relatively similar. They're all have the same like DNA, the same mix up as, as Spider-Man, like as P- as a Peter Parker. Yeah. They're all like, it's like a constant throughout all of their lives. Yeah. And it's, it's funny that like, um, <laughs> it's so funny to me that you, you think you're going to hear it three times again and it's going to be real like long. You even get spider noir who says like, it's a long story. And then yeah. he's, he go, he reads through it all. It's super quick. And he goes, Oh, I guess it wasn't that long. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, they're using the comedy to kind of break up this repetitive nature of it. Yeah. It was perfect. Yeah. But I specifically love this scene too, towards the end of it, whenever all of them, they're trying to come up with the plan to, to get this goober into um, the colliders to, to stop, you know, the universe from expanding and that way they can get back home. And miles is, you know, talking about how he wants to be involved in some capacity. And I, I really love this shot of him going up and looking at the Spider-Man suits and you see his face and you see his face in the, in the, in the reflection of the glass. But at this moment it's below the mask where it's at. So like it's, it's almost signifying that he is just, he's not ready yet. And the other spider people start to really press him about it. And they're like, are you ready to do whatever it takes to, to, to get the job done? Are you going to get up once you've been knocked down 50 times? Are you going to be able to do this? Are you going to be able to do this? And they just start like hammering him down again and again and again and again. And it almost calls back to that moment whenever he started feeling all of that anxiety when all the eyes were on him at school. Mm-hmm. And um, he starts getting these these feelings of like, I've, I maybe I'm not adequate. Maybe I, maybe I can't do this. I don't know if I can get back up the 50th time after I've been knocked down. However, so many like maybe, maybe I'm not ready maybe, for this. Yeah. And, you know, eventually kind of re- recludes back. He like, you know, turns invisible and, leaves. you know, leaves. And we get this like, like incredibly somber moment where miles is kind of like, may- maybe I'm not enough. Maybe this was a mistake mm-hmm. that, that I got bit. Like, I, I don't know how I can be ready for this. This feels too much. Mm. And while he's doing that, he tries to go back to his safe place to tell uncle Aaron. He's like, I've, I've got to tell someone. Yes. I've got to be able to like get this off my chest yeah. because this is just too much for me to bear. Dude. Isn't, is this the moment too where we get the realization of who Prowler is? Yeah. Yes. And it, it's so cool when you think about like, when you think about the, the moments we've seen Prowler or why Peter, or, you know, you, you, you get Uncle Aaron bringing you down to that Alchemex to to go and spray paint. Mm-hmm. Well, why does he know that? The next scene, you see Prowler down there fighting the real Spider-Man, yep. and then now you see Prowler like as as uh, Peter or as Miles goes into Uncle Aaron's. You would think, well, why is the Prowler out there? Maybe he's because he's real good at just tracking. Mm-hmm. But he's literally just going home. Yeah. Like in the realization when he takes off the mask and he's like, I, I think he says something like, "He's yes. speaking to Kingpin yeah, on the like, phone." Yes, Kingpin, you know I get the job done. Yeah. Miles looks at me and he's like, "No, like his whole world is shattered." Yeah. Well, yeah, because that's the person he wanted to confide in, and that's the person who now wants to kill him. Yeah. Because in that conversation, I believe Prowler says, "We have the tapes from the train. I know who the kid is. Like, yep. I, c- I can, I can see who the kid is now." No, he doesn't know it's Miles. But like, he but knows that like he's gonna he find just, like, him. Knows his no. description. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Find him. That's what I mean. But um, again, like we said, like he goes here. Because he's scared and doesn't know what else to do, right? And wants to tell him like, "I'm I'm now Spider Man, but I'm lost and I don't know what to do." Because mm-hmm. his dad isn't hates Spider Man. Isn't he even like writing him a note too? Yeah, he is. Okay. I think yeah, I think he wrote him a note, and then that's when Same. Prowler came in. Um, because his dad hates Spider Man. Yeah, <laughs> and he's like, "Dad, you really hate Spider Man?" He goes, "Well, yeah." <laughs> he's yeah. like, "He's like, yeah, I don't. He's a vigilante." Kind yeah. of against what I do. And his mom just wants to support him. She doesn't really care, nor but she just wants to support him. <laughs> that dad is so funny, man. Yeah, <laughs> for real. Um, and it's yeah. just crazy. Yeah, that, f- that seems wild. From there, my next favorite scene after that is the fight at Aunt May's. It's so good. Yeah. That's my next one as well. Take it. It's They finally, I mean, we get that iconic scene of Peter B. Parker Say we, we we know the threat. They're glitching because they're not meant to be in this universe. If they stay too long, their cells are going to die, and it's going to be painful. So one of them has to stay behind, turn the goober off while everyone else goes back to their universe. And um, Peter B. Parker says, it's going to be me. 
I, I have nothing to go back to. It's going to be me. I'll sacrifice myself. So he goes to Miles and says, you're not ready, dude. Y- can you go invisible? If you can, show me. If you can use your venom strikes, do it now, and you could be a part of it. And he, of course he can. He says, see? He's like, you're just not. So he takes the goober, spins him around, locks him in his chair, yeah, and takes off. And we get that, uh, and I feel like quintessential quote. Oh, yeah. Where he says, like, how am I ever going to know that I'm ready? And you he don't. says, you won't. It's a leap of faith. You just got to be ready to take it. Yeah. They take off. His story will stop there for now, but they all are at Aunt May's house getting ready to, f- to you know, to do the fighting or whatever. And then They're Ma- making the goober, I think, right now. I think they have it. I think they have it. Or they're maybe they are making no, it. No, they're making the goober because Miles shows up. Miles does show up. Af- yeah, because this is after the we get a we get a good conversation of his dad mm-hmm. and him between the wall between the wall and he's like he can't do anything because he's tied up and this conversation this is actually yeah the conversation I feel like is essential mm-hmm. this conversation is basically like sparks Miles Morales and it's like and it's like okay like I really got to step up and be Spider Man like I just got to own up, own up to it and he he finally like does his like charge and. Breaks venom strikes out. Yeah. Venom strikes out, and then Turns goes to Aunt May wall. because no, that's we're wrong. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think of when that because because she says I was wondering when you were going to show up, and then gets gets the um oh that's when he gets the suit. That's when he gets the suit. That's when he gets okay, the suit. that the, the fight at Aunt May takes place before. What it we're does. Talking about. Yeah, it does, and it this leads into one of the like the craziest parts to me is when they're all fighting there everyone's trying to get the goober we see tombstone kingpins there prowlers there scorpions, scorpions there I have a question. is tombstone that gray guy yeah and he's yeah. got okay. the two pistols is he in deadpool no you're thinking of the silver guy i know who you're th- i know you yeah because of. also silver isn't guy. i feel like kingpin is also in deadpool. the silver guy that josh brolin plays <laughs> in silver deadpool guy. No, that's X Men. That's a it's an X Men guy, isn't it? Yeah, it's different. That's a Colossus, or isn't that his name, Colossus? Maybe that sounds f- no familiar. It, yeah, different guy. Okay, I like I said, it's isn't that a ru- it's a Russian dude? Yeah, he's Russian. Kind of reminds me of him. No, look at him. He is silver. I don't know. I don't really know much about Tombstone. Why he looks so freaking dead? <laughs> I don't either. <laughs> I know he's in the games as well. And I I just don't know his backstory at all. But yeah, all of the all of the main villains come mm-hmm. and are just trashing they're freaking fighting. Aunt May's house. Yeah, and they're freaking fighting. Spider Man Noir is like, we don't pick the dance floor. We just we just go at it, baby. Yeah, <laughs> or she, something like she, that. She says, "Can you guys take it out of my house?" Because like she's these we're getting these shots of like her China hutch and stuff like that. All break it. She's yeah. like, <gasps> <gasps> it's, yeah. and it's then funny. she gets this is I actually put this in my favorite scenes. I said. I said Aunt May is a BA because she gets a bat and hits. I don't know which villain she hit. Tombstone. Is it Tombstone? I, I think she hits Tombstone. And she goes, I get out of my house or something. And it was just funny. Yeah. And they're all fighting over this goober. Mm-hmm. And it ends up in Miles' hands. He makes it up. And Prowler just wrecks him, drags him across the roof, is holding him by his neck, and is literally about to freaking kill him. Mm-hmm. And that's when Prowler takes off. Mask. No, Miles no. does it Miles himself. Does it? Miles does it himself, yeah. and it's and it's one of the things that the previous Spider-Man told him Not never to do: to do. Mm-hmm. never reveal your identity. And I think that Miles revealing it to Prow- Prowler, like it, it's he's doing the one thing that Spider the Spider-Man previously told him to never do, and it it, it works for him. It, it technically does save his it does. life. Yeah. It helps him for his benefit, but it in turn takes uncle Aaron's. Yeah. And that w- that happened I was like <gasps> yeah and cuz I again that just shows Kingpin doesn't care. Yeah. He doesn't he's he a, he's, Peter he, Parker. he's a hired, you know, a hiring hand, you know. Yeah. He d- if he has to break a couple of eggs to make the omelet, he doesn't care. Yeah. And Ooh. That was some heat right there. I've never heard <laughs> that before. That's in a whoa. That's in a is fight it? club. Oh, is it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um but um yeah, eventually he, Kingpin shoots Uncle Aaron after he lets Miles go and says, "I'm I'm not gonna do this. I'm I'm out of here because I know this him. is this is my nephew. I'm not gonna do this." Yeah. And Uncle Aaron, bah, kills him. Mm, what you say? <laughs> 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 
Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he shoots him, and then after that happens, Miles, you know, takes him away and into an alley, dude. That yeah, that, that alley scene made scene me is, cry. It feels, feels so incredibly intimate because he's like, I-, I wanted you to look up to me, Miles. Yeah, like you were the best of us. You, were, you are that <laughs> land. That line of him going, Miles, you were the best of us, was like. Oh man, like, like even so even much his, even on his, his shoulders? even his uncle could tell like I know this kid is going to outshine all of us. Like he just has so much potential. He just needs to realize it. And like hearing the guy that you looked up to most who was your safe haven, now that being his dying words. Yeah. Has got to be so impactful. Mm-hmm. And then that's when we we get to we get the bro moment that now his dad thinks Spider Man killed his brother. Uh huh. Which goes. is a, a crazy bro moment. He's like, I want an APB on all Spider Man. APB. Me, APB. I, f- I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't do too much in a in. You should know GTA Five modded lobby. I haven't played that. Come before. on, APB. That should be tattooed on your chest. <laughs> Adjusted present value. No. I don't. I don't know. But we get this whole that whole sequence, and then we get the sequence of them going back to his dorm and saying like listen we got the goober we need to go do what we need to do now but if you want to come along you've got to show us that that you are ready to be spider-man and he can't do so and then whenever his dad shows up to his dorm he then is trying to tell him like hey your uncle aaron you know i'll I'll just i'll tell you at a different time whenever you want to talk to me but I just I want you to know that I love you so much, and the reason I'm so hard on you is because I could just see that you have so much potential, and that's that's why I push you. That's mm-hmm. that's why I am so hard on you because I want you to be the best that you can possibly be. I know that that you are going to be the best that you could possibly be, but you just you need a push, and 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 I I want to do that for you, and I understand if you're mad at me, but you don't have to say I love you. Yeah, back. I was like. Oh. Yeah, it's it's that that's such a it's so good, and the fact that like he can't either he c- because yeah. his webs his his mouth is webbed shut, and his dad doesn't know. Yeah, it's it's great, and um, then from there, you know, he finally gets the the strength and the courage to venom strike out and go to Aunt May's, get the suit, spray paint it, and one of the subtle is not- subtle shots that I love about him getting that suit is. In the previous shot where he looked at the reflection of the glass, he, he is lower. below the mask. But now whenever he goes, that mask is right on his face. He's ready. And it's like it fits the, him. It's it's the moment where Stan Lee says, When it when it fits, it fits. You know, like it, it'll fit eventually. It always does. It always does. And that's that moment right there where like we get the the reflection of his eyes being on the Spider Man mask and it's like this is him. This is Spider-Man. Yeah. He is ready. But he's not just a plain Jane old regular Spider-Man suit. No. He's got to do it up himself. Spray dude. paint it black. And it lo- tell me this suit doesn't look so sick. Yeah. I love that he's he has his still like his uh, sweater on. He still has got his Jordans on. Like, yeah. It still is uniquely Miles, but the suit underneath is sick. Yeah. I, th- I also thought it was cool because... When I think of like Spider Man, I always think of red suits, and when I think of a black suit Spider Man, I always think of Venom mm. or like the Dark Spider Spider Spider. Why the that? symbiote Spider Man, yeah, yeah, symbiote yeah. suit. And when I saw Miles Morales is black, and I said, and he's just a normal Spider Man, I thought that was one of the coolest things. Yeah. It's just dope. The red and black combo. It's a it's an inverse too, you know, because you usually get the red with the black like detailing for the webs, and then the blue. Yeah, it's a completely. Yeah, it's all black with the red detail. It just yeah. looks so sick. Yeah. Like in the games, I never took that suit off. <laughs> never. They yeah. have a into the Spider Verse and across the Spider Verse one, mm-hmm. and they never came off my body <laughs> or yes. off their bodies in the game. It was just. I felt that way with the first Spider Man getting the Raimi suit. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, yeah. <laughs> and playing with the first Spider Man with the Tobey Maguire Isn't it spider just feels suit. So good. And I was like, this just feels right. <laughs> like I gotta I gotta swing around New York with this suit it's on. It's the same thing for me for Miles. Yeah. Um Yeah. And that that iconic scene of him really taking that leap of faith, him jumping off the building, going upside down and saving himself in the right nick of time and yeah. just swing and you could see there's a fluidity of his movements there mm-hmm. too. There's a confidence that came with him being Spider-Man finally. Yeah. I was thinking of 
Did you ever see that TikTok of the the game reviewer for Miles Morales and he's like, the way he effortlessly jumps off the building with the with the exaggerated swagger. Have you ever seen that? <laughs> no. No, I'll have to show you. Exaggerate. It's kind of true. It's, but the way that he's, <laughs> the way that the guy says it is so like. What are you saying right now, dude? I'll show you after. Okay, okay. But, <laughs> <laughs> but he does yeah. have a confidence in his swing now. Yeah. He is the Spider-Man he needs to be to to save the day. Yeah. And he makes it there. Yep. And that comes into my last favorite scene, which is ultimately... The ending. Yeah, Miles becoming Spider-Man. And and the ultimately the ending. <laughs> um, I... I truly love, like, this whole entire ending sequence. Like, the last... 10 15 minutes of the film where it is just non-stop action spider-man everywhere getting their you know their action in and um eventually like whenever they're starting to you know they win the fight at least for that moment and they start to send people home um this is another moment that made me cry that i didn't really expect to to cry at but um you know they're all sitting on this wall and they're sending Spider-Man Noir home and Penny after, you know, her mech died, which made me so sad. Yeah. Oh. You yeah. see the little, like, LEDs saying, like, sad yeah. faces and all that? Yeah. But her, her mech ends up, you know, being destroyed, so then she gets sent home, too, and so does uh, Spider-Ham. And lastly, it's just Peter B. Parker, Gwen, and Miles, and he's about to send Gwen home. And right as she does, as she's about to go, she leaves off with saying um i'll I'll, I'll see you around spider-man and kind of leaves and for me it was that moment of somebody else acknowledging that miles is now spider-man like he not only knows that he himself is spider-man but somebody else can acknowledge it for him and tell him you're spider-man in this universe you are spider-man felt so rewarding to me and it felt like one of those, I don't know, just one of those things where like somebody else can now also see it that like I'm getting validation that what I believe is true and somebody else believes it as well. Just, I don't know. It hit me in the right. Yeah. It hit me in the right way. And I was just like, he is dude. He (laughs) is Spider-Man. And somebody else is like actually taking notice. It's, it felt good. Mm. Yeah. And then that, I mean, obviously sending Peter B. Parker home doing that same move that he does that, the, you know, tripping him and catching him by his shirt. Yeah. And even getting that, that final character arc of Peter B. Parker saying like, what if I go back and Mary Jane doesn't even like, what if it all, what if I'm a failure still? Yeah. Like if what, I go back, she doesn't want me. Yeah. Like what if I am a failure is yeah. really what he's saying. And he says, he says something like, like you, you'll never know. Yeah. It's a leap of faith. Like he brings back the quote. Yeah. It's a leap of faith. And he goes, and there's like a, an acceptance. Yeah. And he lets him go, and then he goes, proud of you, kid. Yeah. And I start going, <laughs> <laughs> I start crying again, dude. It is because he's alone. Yeah. He is alone now. He is sole Spider-Man of this universe, and the threat's not gone. Yeah. Kingpin is still there. Yeah. He's still got one more big threat to to fight, and it's a threat indeed. Dude, freaking Kingpin is Gargan. a unit. Oh, freaking unit, yeah. man. He he's reminds me. freaking. This Kingpin reminds me of James Gandolfini. <laughs> Who plays Tony Soprano? Just a freaking, like a freaking big burly dude. Yeah, you know, like obviously this kingpin is exaggerated with these freaking huge wide shoulders sure. he's got and everything. But I don't know the look of him. I was just like, it reminds me of like someone like Tony Soprano. Just he's built like walks just has in. a damn presence. Yeah, to him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, but I yeah, and then that whole fight with them too at the end where you know they're going through the whole multiverse. And they're in the train car, like yeah. fighting, and then you know his, seeing his multiple dimensions of his of his wife and son that were killed. Dude, Dude see that's him. a crazy moment because that's his origin story, basically. Yeah, right? yeah, and that's, that's what, the whole reason why he's doing what he's doing. Yeah, yeah, it's because of what his wife and kids saw him doing to Spider Man, and now it's happening again. Like it's fate almost for for him to always be the bad guy, you know. Yeah. And it's happening again, and he's you know having this moment where he's like, no. No, Vivian, come back. You yeah. know, and it's not happening for him. And it only makes Kingpin even more mad. And this is another moment where I started to get teared up too, whenever it feels like Miles is losing. Yeah. And Kingpin is like, You took my family away from me again. 
like I've killed one Spider-Man and now I'm going to kill another one. Jeez. And he tries to deliver that finishing blow that originally killed Peter Parker. Mm-hmm. However, it doesn't work for Miles. Miles somehow can like withstand that crushing blow that killed the original Spider-Man in his universe and get back up and it becomes Spider-Man. Yeah. Like, don't like, you, it's so I'm tearing up right now. So <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, don't you love the C2? It kind of is the full circle where the, the shoulder touch. Yeah. Where he's bringing back this, his uncle's flair to him where he goes, you, what does he, does he even ask him? Like you ever heard of the shoulder touch? Yeah. And he just shocks him. He goes, Hey, yeah. <laughs> Venom strikes him. Just feels so, so rewarding, man. Yeah. To yeah, see it, it also feels like a, almost like a point of payback because Kingpin killed Prowler, and when he did that, it's just like, you deserve it. Like, yeah, f you, dude. Yeah, love it. Yeah, and then of yeah. course it goes on to the ending of him saying like, <laughs> him like trying to play it off that his his dad is there, and he's like. Uh, he, I look I, forward to working with you. Yeah, like his <laughs> dark, deep voice. I love you. <laughs> he even hugs him too. It's, yeah, it's so good. Yeah, it's just a, a quality ending, a perfect character arc. For even all, for all of them. Even seeing like the the Spider people get back to their universes too feels good. Like watching Spider Man Noir actually solve the Rubik's cube. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and like seeing Spider Ham go back to his universe and he's eating a hot dog. And um, Penny Parker being in her universe as well. And um, eventually seeing Peter B. Parker at the doorstep of, of Mary Jane. Yeah. Mary Jane's and having flowers in hand. Mm-hmm. Like, it's it's one of those things where it's like, I feel like everybody, like, just got the arc that they needed. Yeah. And, like, it feels so incredibly rewarding. And then it opens up the, the you know, the sequel, right, where – Somehow Gwen is able to open up these portals from different dimensions. Is like, hey, yeah, you want to come with or something? You know, it's it's did, good. Did you guys wait for the end end credit scenes? Oh no, yes. I didn't even know there was. I, yeah, I should have. It's it, Marvel. Yeah, it's no, I didn't. Really, it's 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 a, like a it sets up the second one, but it's also a funny gag. Okay, because it's um. Miguel O'Hara, aka Spider Man twenty ninety nine, uh-huh. with the f- with the fangs. Yeah. Who, of course, if you've seen the trailers, is in across the Spider Verse. Yeah, but it's he, Oscar Isaac, right? Yeah, Oscar yeah. Isaac. Oh, good, but he gets the he gets a little the one of the gizmos that lets him travel through the multiverses, and then he goes. He's like, let's go to the beginning, mm. and he goes to the original. I think it's either the comic book or the actual like original uh, Spider Man show, mm. or may- maybe it's the comic. But he goes and he's like pointing and they're pointing at each other oh. and they're doing that whole like well the you meme. pointed at me first and you put it no 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 but you're 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 accusing me of pointing at me that's funny and, and it's in the the it's and they actually put the meme in the, yeah that's in, funny. The sh- in the credits and they're like pointing at each other just talking and it's, <laughs> it's, crazy. it's so good again like it's so relevant because we get the ice cream that people know if you see that you see an ice cream like that you automatically know it's gonna be funny and then this meme is took the world by storm mm. and seeing it in this movie was so it's yeah. Just the, yeah. Yeah. So that that was the end credit there. Nice. That's it though. And that's the movie. Uh, that's that's it for Spider Man Into the Spider Verse. Mm-hmm. Got any best quotes here that we haven't talked about? I think we do. I wrote one. We should have yeah, some. That made me laugh was when they were stealing the computer. Is one of the scientists who saw them yells when they're running. He stuck a bagel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I have one where. Uh, it's when Peter B. Par- or Peter Parker just dies, and then <laughs> Miles makes a noise, and then Kingpin just goes, "Kill that guy! Kill that guy!" <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I laughed yeah. hard when he said that. Yeah. Uh, another one that made me laugh is from Spider-Man Noir. He says, "Sometimes I let matches burn down on my fingertips just to feel something, <laughs> anything." <laughs> <laughs> that sounds. I hate this. I'm sorry, but this sounds like. Nick, when he sticks his hand outside just to feel the cold. Just to feel it, just to freeze it. Yeah. I think even that if in that uh, scene, too, he uh, they ask him what dimension Miles is from, and he goes, Brooklyn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. Yeah. Can animals talk in this dimension? Because I don't want to spook them. It just passes out. And then out. passes yeah. out. Yeah. Uh, I have, um, I think it's Spider-Ham says, the hardest thing about this job is that you can't always save everyone. Mm. Mm. Just kidding. Which yeah. is true. Definitely. Any other best quotes here? I think for me. There's probably more, but those are, those are the ones I wrote down. Okay. 
All right, if that's it for the best quotes, then let's move into some bra moments. We've already talked about the I love you, Dad scene, which was in mine. Mm-hmm. Um, also, Miles pulling Gwen's hair out. Yeah, that was wild. Yeah. That's, I'd be mad. Her having to shave it off. Yeah. Imagine someone accidentally made you shave your head. Yeah, I'm be, so... I'd be pissed. So yeah. She looks good with it, though. Yeah. <coughs> um, I love the whole Stan Lee cameo. Stan, that is that is a big bro moment, and it's yeah. seeing you wouldn't expect it to be him, yeah. and then when he's like buying that janky little suit, yeah, he's like, what is it, what does he ask him? He says, he goes, do you fit? accept returns? And he says, uh, he says eventually it always fits or something like that. And then he like it pans up to him, he's smiling, and then the camera pans a little more to the left. Yeah, and it says no <laughs> refunds ever or like something it's like that. No it. refunds and no yeah. returns. Yeah, both probably both, but yeah. Yeah, that it's was, great. That's but a bro it, moment. It is a bro moment because that is actually Stan Lee's last cameo before he ever passed away. And Rest it, in peace. Yeah, the fact that like this, a movie that is this great gets to this gets to be his final send off mm-hmm. for a character that he loved. You know, just I don't know, feels right. You know. Yeah. That was, that was very good. Yeah, but then other than that, for me, is the last the last one I had written down was Prowler being Uncle Aaron. Yeah. yeah, that was a big bro moment for me. Yeah. The the last one I had was uh, I was taken aback by seeing Kingpin's um, real motivation for getting this collider working. I w- mm. I felt just incredibly. Um, I just like I kind of felt for him a little bit mm. because you know all he's trying to do is just get his family back. Yeah, and it's really difficult for me to to hate a guy for for being like he's so broken that he'll but do he's anything. Doing so so much damage. Just to get his family back. I know, but when but you're there's there's almost like he's like there's he's almost kind of like a like an honor in that. Like he is doing quite literally everything possible, spending millions and problem. millions of dollars True. to try to get this family back. If he didn't, if he didn't do anything to Sp- Spider Man, his wife and kids would still be here. Well, I mean, and he technically didn't do it to Spider Man. Goblin did. Well, no, he, she saw they saw him fighting and then they took off and got hit by a car yes but so it's but what what i'm saying is that like the the the, the experiment would have worked had goblin not oh, smashed tr- freaking it would have worked yeah like had had goblin not smashed spider-man into the freaking portal yeah that's true too yeah so i i just dis- i just like that they you gave cannot, him no don't honor him I'm just saying <laughs> no there's it's complexity ho- in the villains. It's like, uh, it, it, he's complex. That's why I like this scene so much. It's because you know he's got a re- he's got a motivation for doing what he's like, doing. Yeah, like he's he a is good so villain. broken. He has nothing to live for. That he will spend all of his money. He will hurt whoever he has to hurt. He will do whatever he has to do to get his family back. Yeah, I get that. But he's not just oh, I'm evil. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> give me money. Like he's give he's the, the listen the best villains. Oh, get you to sympathize. Get you to sympathize with them. That's true. Look at Joker. That's true. I definitely did. Exactly. That's true. With Kingpin, I definitely yeah. did. Kingpin also reminds me of Humpty Dumpty in this still. <laughs> Do you? Just because of how I was thinking. Yeah. <laughs> and he, he takes the entire seat. It's, it's so the good. Whole thing. Yeah. Tell me that's not Humpty Dumpty. He also reminds me of Rhino. Mm. Doesn't nah. he turn into Rhino? No. 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 Rhino's a different. Rhino's guy. different. Yeah. Um, all right, if that's it for bro moments, what are we getting into? Facts with the bros? All right, yeah. yeah. The budget. The Gotta budget? be crazy, right? I thought it was going to be insane. Yeah. So to make this movie, it was $90 million. Okay. okay. Which I don't that's think is that expensive for an animated film. It's I feel it's like a there's big been budget, though. It's a big budget, it but is. I feel like there's been bigger budgets for animation. Okay. Opening weekend, it made $35.3 million. All right. Uh, gross for U.S. and Canada was one hundred ninety point two million dollars, and then gross worldwide is three eighty four point two million dollars. Awesome, killed, killed yeah. for sure. I think it tripled its money. Yeah, yeah. it you also had an Oscar run. It did, dude. It, it, tell it, me this isn't sick. Yeah, it got Oscar nomination and win for best animated film of that year. Oh, I wonder who it went. Twenty nineteen Oscars. I'm not sure who it went against. That'd be interesting. I had a fact that says um, that this is the first non-Disney Pixar film to win an Academy Award for Best Animated Feature since Rango in 2011. And then I think it was Shrek after that. 
right? Uh, yeah. Or no, it was Happy Feet. Oh, okay. And Shrek did win it in 2001. Okay. But that's another part of the fact is that it's there's only six of them that are non-Disney Pixar who have won this award. Mm. Being Shrek, Spirited Away, Wallace and Gromit, Happy Feet, Rango, and of course, Spider-Man being the sixth. That's so yeah. Disney's got a hold on that category. Yeah, we yeah. need to give them a run for their money. <laughs> until, until something who definitely deserves the win. Spider-Man deserves to win. You might disagree. Spider-Man went against Incredibles 2, Isle of Dogs. Oh, um, oh dang that's why it. I said you might disagree. I don't <laughs> know how to say this one. It's spelled M-I-R-A-I. Let me see. I don't know. I think it's a Japanese film. Mirai. Mirai. And I've then Ralph that. Breaks the Internet is what it went against. Mm. Oh, yeah. No, Spider-Man only, wins it. Yeah, i only seen Spider-Man out of these. Spider-Man wins it, no doubt. I do love Isle of Dogs, but Spider-Man, yes, might disagree, one of the things that Isle works the most is the freaking animation. Yeah. We'll get to it, but <coughs> holy crap, that's yeah. great. So in, p- in part of the big budget, um, the reason that it cost a $90 million number, not only was because of how expensive CGI can be and all that stuff, but also they had to hire a ton of animators. Oh, yeah. It like, is not easy. There was a team of up to 180 animators that worked on this film, the largest crew that's ever worked on a Sony Pictures animation film to this date. Wow. wow. Yeah. And you could tell yeah. with just the freaking quality. Yeah, and even so, like it took an incredibly long time for the movie to actually get made. Oh, yeah. Just because there were a lot of aspects of the animation that um, were actually hand-drawn in, in certain aspects to give it that comic book feel. And I was even seeing, too, that like, for miles specifically they would show him at like 12 frames per second versus your normal 24 to give it that choppy kind of feel yeah and make it look comic booky um and even so too um there was like an average um average time that it would take to make like at least a minute of the film or like a couple seconds of the film and i was reading here too that it, it took animators a week to do at least four seconds of the movie so because of how involved and sophisticated the animation process was, in some cases it would take months to do four seconds for a piece of this film. That's – you you have to have vision. I, I could – I imagine like if I worked at a studio like that, it would be difficult for me to just see the same scene, especially yeah. if it's only four seconds over and over and over, and I feel like I would just get disheartened saying like, God, it's so dark. Yeah. But you really have to have a certain level of focus and just – and a team. And a team, really. Yeah, the encouragement to get through that, I feel like it would be grueling. Yeah. And that, that reading that fact actually brought up um, uh, something that I've, I've, I've been seeing a lot <coughs> recently in, the, in the, the movie cinema world about how these studios just, they have the ability to just completely can a movie and, like, yeah. write it off as a tax write-off. Like, could you imagine the amount of work that you put into to making a movie like this and for a studio to say, nah, we're, we're canceling the entire project for a tax write off. Like, like, m- like months of my work, months of my life, years, maybe have just been thrown down the drain for something that's never going to be seen by anybody. Yeah. I, I could, mean. I would feel destroyed. Yeah. <laughs> Especially if it's something I had such passion in. Yeah. Would suck. Well, passion. More passion, more passion, more energy. (laughs) Any other facts here? Uh, One that I thought was pretty cool, unless if you guys noticed it, that there's things in this universe that kind of resemble our universe Mm -hmm. that is kind of different. So things that I noticed were the NYPD is is different. PDNY. And then there's a Chance the Rapper poster. Instead of um, wearing a three, he's wearing a four. Yeah. To show yeah. that it's different. Or universe. even Coca Soda. Yeah, Coca Soda. I've seen yeah. that. It's so cool. Yeah. Or Red X instead of FedEx mm-hmm. on the on the uh, trucks. UPS is uh Try Us. Oh really? <laughs> That's funny. Any other facts here? Yes. Um I had read about a little bit about Kingpin and I uh, so apparently it's the producer Phil Lord's favorite villain, one of his favorite characters. He says um, his physical presence doesn't leave room for anything else. He can just stand there and everything bends to his will, even the camera. He is basically this pure black figure and the most abstracted animated character I've ever seen. Mm. So that's it. 
not only like that's why he's animated the way he is. That's why he is so freaking large. Mm-hmm. It's to give him that that just effect of. of the, he he's can't, the, he can't is, escape this guy. Exactly, he is yeah. the presence. He kind of reminds me of a warden. Mm. The way he's built. <laughs> <laughs> Square, dude. <laughs> Wild. And then my last one is um, whenever they first did the collider, and you see that light pole get all f- freaky, yeah. and you see, I you, think it's a Banksy. Yeah, <laughs> that's Post Malone. Yeah, I read that actually. Crazy. Wait, what? Yeah, that's Post Malone saying that. The guy that says, "I think it's a Banksy," is Posty. <laughs> that's so funny. Yeah, it is funny. So that's my last one. All right, that's it for the facts. What didn't work for this movie? I'm in- interested to hear if we got anything. Um, I I don't have anything. What it's a little selfish request of mine. T- I wanted, I wanted a little bit more time with some of the more interesting Spider-Man characters, just because yeah. I liked them, like Spider Noir. I wanted, I just wanted a little bit more. Like if we had another hour, it would be sick to see them more developed. Mm. That's it. It's just a little selfish desire of mine, because yeah. we don't really get a lot of Spider or of uh, Penny Parker. Yeah. No, they're I just feel like she would be cool to dive into. A little bit. Like, I, I don't know. They just, they're so interesting that I wanted more of them. Mm. But it's, you couldn't have, it's it's really hard balanced because you have so many characters, you can't be invested in all of them. Yeah. Otherwise, it'd be too. Uh, too long of a movie. Yeah. yeah. Especially for an animated film that's going to be targeted to kids exactly. and stuff like that, yeah, too. Exactly. And it takes four seconds to make, or a week to make four seconds. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Imagine True. doing another hour. Yeah. Yeah. It's selfish, I admit it, but they're just good characters. <laughs> I yeah. want to see more of them. I don't got anything for this category. I, I, yeah, I, I feel like this movie's pretty. It's pretty dang perfect. It's pretty yeah. tight. Man. It's, it's yeah. good. It's just no cracks in the armor. I, uh, no, I'm not gonna even mention it because it's just like I kind of would just wish. Why I feel like Spider Man's are always in New York, and I just mm. kind of wish it was different because we get, we get one that's in Tokyo now. Mm. Um. But that's not nothing particular in this movie. So it's yeah. that's why I think it's just Miles. Anything. They still have to stay true to his. Yeah, his yeah, 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 yeah. One hundred percent. I get it. So that's it. Yeah, it's, there's nothing. All right, then what did work, dude? This is a comic book in a movie. Did you, I'm I'm reading a comic book it's while a, watching the movie. Yeah, it's a moving comic book. Literally, it's so cool. Mm-hmm. There's and there's not like Nick says all the time. There's nothing that can compare to this movie. It is so yeah. I, and I think this is one that really does stand out amongst its peers. And, and that's why I like it so much because of how unique it is. Yes. Um, I think the animation choice and Dude. just the way that it looks visually is just uh, – it, it, it's the black sheep amongst amongst the, the crew, right? You've got your Pixar and your DreamWorks and, and all that stuff, and they have like that same standard look. Yeah. And then you get this – movie that comes along and it shows you like we can do something completely different yeah and and we can make it look phenomenal and we can also tell a story that is is going to intrigue people for years to come Mm -hmm. and 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 be meaningful to to people and um not only just the animation choices here but also like the way that they choose to to uh show the cinematography throughout the film like there are certain shots that get put in the film that i'm like these are are beautiful. Mm-hmm. Like these are actually beautiful shots. I'm thinking of the shot of Miles being upside down that's amongst such the a cityscape. Shot. You know, mm-hmm. like that skyline is incredible. And like the fact that people are able to have just this vision of what they want the movie to look like, and then going in and putting in the time to animate things yeah. like this, is is I think just not only a tell of, of, of a person's passion oh, yeah. for, for, for their project and for just cinema in general, but also just a testament to just how talented like people really can be. Yeah. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. Visually stunning, dude. I it it's hard for me to really put into words just how stylistic this is, just how like rich in detail, just how smooth the animations are. It, the the choices they make the comic book elements of this I think fit it so well. You see the shading on all the a, a lot of the characters are like this comic book dots like you know the yeah yeah it is it's just sick. You get so much character too. It like you get to see scenes where in just a brief instant 
all of the all of the colors are inverted or like mm-hmm. the the contrast is insanely bright you think of the scene when he's jumping by the train and once he gets to the middle of the frame it like it's all bright yellow and just you know a flood of colors and then it goes back to the animation style like yeah they have so much freedom to express the emotions in subtle co- subtle color changes of the background like i think of when we see the different universes when we see like spider gwen's universe it's all like this watercolor purplish like mix of color it just is so cool and they have the freedom to to explore ideas in in visual storytelling mm-hmm. ways rather than you know be, like talking about it yeah it, it it's just sick they have s- unlimited possibilities and i love that yeah yeah i also have to just boast about the writing here i think that the the writing really couldn't be more rock solid mm. like it is like I had said, I think one of the few movies that truly understands and displays the character of Spider-Man and and the idea of of him, mm-hmm. I think it it's done so incredibly well here. And um, I also just have to talk about like all of the little intricacies in the story. Excuse me, in the story that make um, that make it so great and and they make it like so rewatchable. Oh yeah, like. I found myself on the rewatch whenever Miles like falls the first time and he falls with the 42 yeah. right next to him. <laughs> yeah. You know, like looking at stuff like that and being like, what does that mean? You know, and then, you know, going and looking up the answer and then on a rewatch being like, I remember what that means, you know, or like little things like that. I'm even thinking of like physical um, and metaphorical um, things in the movie that, that end up getting, f- you know, fleshed out. Like, I'm thinking specifically of the part whenever um, he goes to Stan Lee and, you know, he buys the, the Halloween costume. And whenever, you know, it's it, – whenever he buys it, Stan eventually tells him that, you know, the, the suit will always fit eventually, right? It, like, as a gag. Right. Uh, but – But there is so much truth to it, it because is. at a time, you know, it physically, you know, he wouldn't have fit into the suit, right? Because – he didn't, you know, hit his growth spurt or whatever after he got bit, right? But after he gets bit, you know, he grows a bit physically and everything. But metaphorically, he also fits the suit. Like, he he becomes the role, right? And in, in, in a sense, he finally does fit mm-hmm. the suit uh, once, it, once he truly does become Spider-Man. Yeah. And, and he finds himself fitting it the way that Stan Lee had said. You know, it's it's like little things like that where it feels like a little, you know, one off line. And then you come back to it and you're like, oh, wait, the, f- the suit actually always does fit eventually. Mm-hmm. Like it's little stuff like that, yeah. that, that, that there's so much care here for for the writing. And again, just for the character of Spider-Man and and, and, and it being done in such a new and, and, and unique way makes for for just uh, an incredible movie oh yeah yeah i i couldn't agree more i really couldn't the v- i even think the voice acting here is perfect yeah yeah definitely i <laughs> i love a lot of the choices they made um i th- i think everyone nails their their performance as well and they hit their lines i mean <laughs> i i didn't ever think that i would like nick cage as like this moody noir spider-man but yeah. his voice just seems to fit perfectly yeah, and I, I couldn't imagine anybody else doing it yeah and yeah. john mulaney as peter porker like yeah. yeah i didn't know that was john mulaney until i looked at the at the cast and i was yeah. like <laughs> excuse me i was like i know that name that's crazy yeah it, it i'm just thinking <laughs> two of his last line where he goes that's all folks yeah and he yeah. goes is he allowed to say that like, legally? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. It's yeah. so good. The yeah. writing that comes with the writing, the comedy, it all works. Yeah. I got to talk about this soundtrack. This yeah. soundtrack has banger after banger after banger. Even if like like the original songs that are that are made for this movie are amazing. Like Sunflower was made specifically for this movie. But then there's other songs that we know and we recognize that just fit in this movie yeah. and are perfect. Mm-hmm. Oh it, yeah. It, Anytime like a song came on, my head was banging. I was just like, yeah. I'm thriving. Yeah, I mean, even too, like with the actual score work, like I talked already about Prowler's theme. Dude. Like, it's incredible. Like the 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 menacing nature There's of it. And then also it like that it just it just catches me. Yeah. And like 
I I have to say two things about like the score. Like it, it's just a beautiful score, and it feels like Spider Man. Mm-hmm. You know, it's 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 really good work. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know what else. I don't know how else to sing this thing's praise, man. Yeah, looks great, sounds great, characters are great, story is great. What more could you ask for, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, and not only that, but it's setting up. It's it's it, it's leaving it open mm-hmm. for wherever the universe wants to go next. Mm-hmm. And I, th- the fact that I know that there's a second one and going to be a third one at some point, I, I'm with. Like, I'm just on the tip of my freaking toes waiting for the third one to come out. Dude, uh, I don't even talk about it. I watched the second one in theaters twice. I watched mm. the second one in theaters too. And they turned the animation style to 11. Mm. It is almost like it's it's hard really sometimes to just sit there and just take it all in. Mm. You, you, there's some stuff in, in that movie that you see and you're like, but how did that work? Mm. Like, I can't. You haven't watched the movie. I know. I'm not trying to spoil <laughs> it, but I, I just I'll sing that one's praises too. It's, I think it's it's fantastic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that I'm glad I watched that one in theaters. So okay, consistent. Right. Well, if that's it for what did work, who wins this movie? Miles Morales. Shamik. Shamik. I think so. Shamik. It's uh, Shamik Moore. I think is that that I think that's his name. Yeah. Yeah, he's great as Miles. I I really do feel like he encapsulates who Miles Morales is. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, really enjoyed his uh, performance. Yeah. Um, well, if that's it for who wins the movie, got any themes? I've got one. Uh, I wrote, finding power within yourself and accepting the responsibilities you have regardless of who you are or where you come from. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's literally the whole point of the, the mask. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Couldn't agree more. And I that, you know, at the end of the film, he specifically says, like, Anyone can wear that mask. Mm-hmm. You can wear the mask. It doesn't, it doesn't, it, it, you know, it didn't have to be me. It could have been any one of us. Yeah. Isn't, you know? I think that's something Mary Jane says in his, like, in her little, what is that, an her, obituary yeah. speech or whatever? Yeah. And, and the, the guy says, like, I he's, he's, like, he's like, she's talking to me. I, I, I can be Spider Man. He's like, and the guy goes, I think she's speaking metaphorically, yeah. not actually literally to you, but <laughs> but it, but she's quoting Peter saying like he didn't really think of himself as anything more than just a regular human who was the one who got bit. Yeah, yeah, he, I think she says like he just liked being Spider Man. Yeah, and she says in in a way we are all Spider Man. Yeah. We so all have to do our part. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely what it is. It's kind of a call to action. Yeah. Any other themes here? No. All right. Well, if that's it for the themes, what are we rating this? I'll go first. I give it a nine. Such a good movie. I feel like anybody can watch this movie. Mm. I feel like this is a movie you can throw on for the background. N- not a ten, just because it's not my favorite. Mm. Fair. Yeah. I'm giving this. I'm going to give this a nine as well. Okay. I I hesitate because it the story for me isn't finished. Mm. But when I contain it to this one story, I think, uh, for what it is, for the origin it is, I can't think of a better way to, to bring Miles Morales into the picture, man. Mm. And, yeah, it's visual. I mean, it's one of the most stunning animated pictures I've ever seen. Mm. Yeah, I think I'll go in the same vein as you. Um, just because I do, like, I don't have the full picture yet. Yeah. But that's not to say that the movie is not incredible. Yeah, it's fantastic. Like, fantastic. I feel like... Yeah, my throat's dry. Um, um, I feel like once I get an actual full picture of the entire story that they're going to tell here, that this is going to be one of those movies where I'm going to be, I'm going to look back at this episode and kick myself in the butt and be <laughs> like, why didn't I give it a 10? You know? But that's, I mean, that's one of the things about the yeah. about this, that, you know, rate, feelings can change about a movie exactly. at any time, any yeah. point, you know? So, but yeah, I'm feeling a nine right now too as well. Yeah. So I 100% agree with all y'all. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely fantastic. Now we're into Christmas. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and that's the end of the episode. So if you guys stuck all the way to the end, we appreciate you. If you're watching on YouTube, leave us a like, subscribe to the channel, comment, hit the bell, all that stuff. Um, if you are listening on the audio platforms, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, et cetera, um, leave us a rate and review. Let us know what you're thinking there. Uh, if you don't want to, um, 
leave that stuff in a public platform like that. Click into the episode descriptions. Follow us on Instagram. Uh, email us. <coughs> things of that nature. Um, I'm trying to get through this quick because I need some water. <laughs> but um, I'll take over for you. Yeah, I mean, I, I, well, what I'm going to say here before before we announce the pick is that during the the holiday season, as we as we get closer to Christmas, um, we're going to be doing Abraham's pick, um, which is going to be bringing us into the Christmas movies. But as we get into the Christmas time, uh, we kind of want to, you know, spend time with our families and all this stuff. And 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 holidays get hectic, and it's hard to kind of get together with one another yeah. every single week around this time. Yeah, especially so even closer to Christmas, it gets cr- yeah, work, freaking crazy. Work yeah. gets busy and. And not only to mention, Christmas actually falls on the day that we record on. Yeah. yeah. So it, it's almost a no-go for that week. Yeah. So what we're going to be doing uh, during December is we're going to be giving, putting out two episodes for the month. So what's going to happen is one week, next week, we will release an episode. And then next week, take a week off. And then the week before Christmas, we will then put out another pick. And then the week of Christmas, we'll take another break, and then the new year will come back in, and we'll be back, and we'll be back to our regularly regularly scheduled program. We'll be back, and it'll be crazy. It'll be three years. Mm-hmm. Yep. When we come back. Yep. That is insane. Yeah, that definitely. Is wild. It's insane. Can't believe it. Think about full swing. Yeah, seriously. But like Isaiah said, we're going into the Christmas spirit now, and I feel like I'm gonna go into some of your guys' childhood. Um, with this movie, I actually have never seen this movie, but I know about it, and I'm choosing the 1994 movie, The Santa Claus, with okay. Tim Allen. Yeah. Um, 1994. This watches with my grandma. Really? Yeah. I know this was like on this showed on like Disney Channel and stuff. Yeah, it's a Disney movie. Um, but back like whenever said, they made live action films, dude, which were good. Um, oh, okay. And. But I've never seen this one. I've only seen the third one with Jack Frost, which I heard is the worst <laughs> one That's to watch. That's the doo one. <laughs> so with Martin I, Short. I yes. feel bad yeah. for watching that one before I had this one. But that's I, when I got cable, that's mm. what was out. The um, second one always sticks out in my mind because of the to- like the toy version of Santa Claus that they create. Is f- isn't it kind of like he like sh- dancing? Yes, freaky. Yeah, <laughs> I have faint memories of these movies, like a brief snapshots of Tim Allen as, as this white beard, white haired Santa I, Claus. I yeah. remember the scene when he goes to the doctor when he's getting like fat. Yeah. And, yeah. and like I do remember that scene, but I don't like I can't tell you scenes from the movie. Right. It's remi- been so long. Yeah. I, I, like I said, I've never seen it. He isn't it reminds me of one of those uh Evan Almighty mm, one of those bro. scenes where it's like yeah. you're you're being into this new role but still kind of denying it. it Doing the whole shaving, yeah. your beard comes back, and all that stuff. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I'm excited. I I wanted to actually sit down and really see what's going on here. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited. Like I said, it's bringing into the holiday spirit, and mm-hmm. this is I feel like a movie everybody has watched. Yeah, and streaming on Disney Plus. Yeah, too. Oh, perfect. So if you've got that streaming platform, check it out. It's a fun watch. It's family friendly pick too. You know, I feel like a perfect pick to kind of usher in the holiday season. So. Tune in next week to hear what we have to say about the Santa Claus. As always, this has been the Film Bros Podcast. Thank you, and good night. Good night. Good night.